G'day guys, welcome back to Cakes by Chopper. Today we have the Death by Chocolate Cake, the first of many little spooky treats I have for you. This is such a creepy, unnerving cake that I'm actually really proud of. I like the look of this, how they're coming out of this black tar that's like sucked the soul out of them. But, but let's not get carried away. I'm gonna show you guys how to make it. Let's go. To get started on this Death by Chocolate Cake, I've chosen a red vanilla cake, which I've done five of those just for a normal tiered cake. And I also purchased this mold off eBay. It came fairly quickly and they're readily available everywhere. You can get them off multiple sites. So just have a look around for the mold you want to use. Then I set a bunch of the little molds with chocolate and I did four full solid skulls and then lots of just half of the mold because I'm gonna stick them on the side, which you'll see later on. But what we're gonna do now is take our cakes. We're gonna fill them with ganache, stack them and give them a crumb coat of that ganache. But it's not just any ganache. I've used a nice black ganache. Kind of looks like Vegemite actually. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't smell like Vegemite. Now we're not going to glue this down because we're going to move this cake later on. So I'm just using this board in place, which I can get started on the filling and then we'll stack it, put it in the fridge and then transfer that when we're done. How good does that black and red look together? Now we're just going to go over and give that a second coat of ganache covering all the cake so it's not visible and don't worry too much about it. I just want to make sure it's sealed in and you don't see any of the red. That's all we're going for because we've got another chocolate to go over the top. Once we're happy with the final ganache coating, now remember there's a lot of chocolate on this because why it's called Death by Chocolate. I've got these little skulls that are chocolate and I've put some petal dust in their eye sockets and features. I'm going to save these four full skulls for the very top but I'm gonna place probably three quarters of them all around the cake, pour on our mirror glaze, and then I'm gonna put some in afterwards so that we've got the features still popping out. I think it's gonna look really cool. We're gonna use the what's left of our ganache to put some on the back of the chocolate here, and then stick it to our cake wherever we see fit. Now I'm gonna really push that in when I get one on the other side, so I'll just make sure they're really stuck to the cake. Now when you've got skulls on the opposite sides, you can use those to really push them into the cake. Okay, now I'm pretty happy with that. I've got a couple left over to go on after the mirror glaze. I'm gonna pop this into the fridge to set that ganache really firm, and then we'll pop it onto a tray and pour our mirror glaze over. Okay, so and now that our cake has chilled and it's out of the fridge, the skulls are set firm. I've got our chocolate mirror glaze. This is the money shot. We're gonna pour this over the top and let it ooze past the skulls. If it covers some, that's okay because it's gonna look really creepy like they're trying to emerge. Uh, you wanna make sure you pour in the middle and go in a circular motion to try and get it even all over the cake. You only get one shot at this, so <laughs> let's go for it. I put some mirror glaze aside in a piping bag because I knew that some of the skulls would block the run down the sides. So now I'm gonna just ever so gently go in and squeeze some mirror glaze to fill in those areas and just let that run down so it looks like the entire cake's covered and you haven't missed a spot. Now that I'm happy with the drip and the coverage of the cake, what I'm gonna do is place in two skewers in the dead center. This is just gonna help me balance when I do the terrifying maneuver of trying to lift this cake with the spatula off the rack onto the board. Okay. There we go. Now we can twist those and pull them out without damaging the cake too much. Okay, we're on the home stretch now. I'm gonna take the rest of these little skulls and just push them in where I'd like them. They will create their own little drip but it also breaks up that it's just not totally covered. If we were to put them all on at once, it just would have got covered, as you can see, and only a couple stick out. But you wanna just have a look where you think they'd sit best. Make sure they're not all going the same angles and really push them into that so they get a little bit of a dribble over them. You just wanna make sure you've pushed out all of the mirror glaze from underneath. Last but not least, we're gonna take our skulls now I've got one that I've chosen for the top and we're gonna put them in a formation of three. So one, two, three. 
and the fourth one just on the side on top. And they sort of sink in and make it look like they've come out of this black tar and it's death by chocolate is what I'm calling this cake. And what I'm gonna do is take the last of our mirror glaze and just go and create sort of an oozy drippy border. Um, you don't have to do this, but I think it's just gonna look extra cool like it's this pile of black oozing tar. So now that the oozy border is on, we are finished the death by chocolate cake. What do you think guys? Is it creepy? Does it, does it make you feel unsettled? I love it. I, like when I was thinking of this concept, I was playing a lot of Mortal Kombat and there's just skulls and, and darkness and it's what came about. So I hope you guys like it. Um, be sure to stay tuned and check out the YouTube that I've featured in this week's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye guys.